Greetings. Today I would like to share more about why being in relationships with narcissists truthfully changed my life. What I began to see over my time in this reality, on this journey, was that those I had labeled near and dear had narcissistic tendencies. And then coming to terms with that, I begin to realize how powerful the art of deception can be. See, when you're dealing with those who have these kinds of traits, they don't care about truth. Being genuine has no kind of substance to them at all. It's just, it does nothing. It's all about the art of spin, deception, controlling the narrative. Just as some people will say the news media can do with fake news or how others can do on whatever other channels they communicate with the larger society. But when you're dealing with these intimate relationships, whether it be a significant other, whether it be your family, your friend group, your peer group, it doesn't matter. You begin to see how powerful being able to influence the narrative of others, even of self, can be. What I battled with for a long time was trusting in who I was. And that was because I was taught to always focus on things outside of me, on people outside of me. Worry about what people are going to say. Been hearing that since I was a kid. As I got older. As I began to speak out more about the truth as I see it, the reality as I see it, I began to get more backlash. And I didn't understand it at first. Then I began to learn about triangulation. And how, how although I can speak my truth in certain environments... There will be stories told about me. There will be rumors spread. So that whenever I did speak my truth, I would be silenced. I would be labeled as crazy. I would be labeled as going through uh, something mentally. I was labeled a drug addict at one point. It's, I mean, the, the stories never end. But I begin to see the patterns. And that's when I begin to gain the power. See, when you've been labeled as whatever negative label you want to attach to a person for so long, either you accept it as true or you dig deeper to find out why others will say that. And I dug deeper. I removed myself from the environments that perpetuated these stories, these rumors. And I allowed myself to have time with myself. To really think about or map out what was occurring in my life. What I was witnessing in my life. It's not to say I was perfect at all. No. But as much as I held myself accountable. I began to see the pattern of things happening. For instance, in my families. I would begin to see that if I have a particular conversation with one individual. That a group of other individuals in the same family will begin to treat me a certain way as if they were offended. Well, how could they be offended by a personal conversation I've had with this one person? Oh, it's because what I've relayed has been filtered through this person I talked to. And they've spent it into their own narrative. And then I began to pay attention to other relationships and how the same thing kept happening. So if I share this information, if I tell my truth, if I'm honest, if I bear my heart, then that information will be switched up and used against me. Now this happened in marriage. This happened in my family. On father's side, when it came to my mother's side, small family, but it was very interesting in dealing with her. In the sense of I could remember most recently when I did speak to her, she would take information that I would talk to her about in my life. And if she can gain information on others, say my brother, she'll use what I told her about my life and use that information against him. Not that I was speaking about him. At times I did discuss him. 
but not in a negative light, in a light of understanding, in a light of I see where he is in his life. I can appreciate his perspective, although I don't agree. But she would take that information that I shared and she would spin it and she'll use it against him to verbally attack him. And I began to see that this pattern was playing out so much that I couldn't be crazy. Nah, at this point I trusted myself. And in trusting myself, I said I have to remove myself from these situations, from these interactions. Hence the estrangement. I told my family, hey, I'm, I'll pass on all the toxic traits and behaviors. Don't call me, I'll call you. And kept it moving. Now, did that spark something on their side? I don't know. I really don't care. But for the first time in my life, I stood up for what I truly believed and knew to be right and didn't second guess it. Now, there were times before, yeah, I stood up for myself, but it would still be that lingering doubt. There would still be that, man, am I tripping? Nah. At this point, I'd essentially slayed the largest, the largest giant in my life, which was a collective of family. I'm not labeling them bad or evil people. No, I simply understand how they maneuver their journey. Deception. Whether it be controlling reputation, whether it be ensuring that those around them feel as if they are subordinate to them, to themselves. No matter how they use this order of deception, I begin to understand how that power can no longer be wielded over myself. And in doing so, they didn't know what to do with me. If anything, the attacks became harder. More things were shared. More strangers would somehow be comfortable in approaching me as if they knew me. Speaking to me or uh, addressing me a certain way. As if they wanted to provoke a version of me that they had heard about. And at times, it was stressful. Until I saw the pattern. Then I didn't care. That's when I began to remove myself from any and all contact, physical environments, any way possible. Stay away from these people. It's like poison ivy. Just being close to it. Just being close to it. You might get a little bit of contact, even when you're not paying attention. Now, are there certain situations where I'm not able to avoid? It's small. But if I do have to interact, I give nothing. I show up when I need to be there, but I give nothing. Because no matter what you give, no matter how earnest you are, no matter how honest your intent, you have to remember that you are operating in a manner that is not conducive to the lifestyle that these people live. No, they're playing a whole nother game. They're living in a whole nother reality. Where whatever they say goes, whether it be true or not, whether they care if it's true or not, plays no part in what they relay out to other people. And because of this understanding, I begin to see why they believe they're so powerful. Now, it can work on those that allow it to work. That influence is going to be there. Cool. But it's your job to protect yourself. That's it. Just as it was my job to protect myself. And I didn't know what that was going to look like. When I started blocking certain numbers, when I said, hey, don't call me, I'll call you. Hey, I'm doing something over here. I'll catch up with you when it's that time of my life. Hey, I don't want to deal with you. No matter how I said it, no matter how I related. Some people I just didn't entertain, period. I just dropped off the earth. But I had to do that to step away. I had to do that to really see how my journey had gotten me to where I was at that point in my life. And once I did that, everything became coherent. The issues within myself, the issues with others. And then I was able to make choices to change the, direct, the direction in which I was headed. 
Do I have it figured out? No, not at all. But what I did realize is that when I deal with these people with these narcissistic tendencies, I don't have nothing. I don't have anything really to give them. They want attention. I don't have it to give them. They want validation. I genuinely don't have it to give them because the way that they live their life, the way that they thrive on validation and influence, I don't set up my reality like that. I don't set up my value of self like that. So if I don't give, if I don't feed myself that kind of energy, how could I feed it to somebody else? It's simple. Not always easy though. And over time, see relationships dwindle away. Some cut off, some rip from the roots. Okay. One thing you can guarantee is if you keep feeding these people, they're gonna get bigger and bigger. The influence that they have over your journey is going to get larger and larger. And it's not so they can make choices for you. It's so they can give you something to fight against so much that you forget about yourself. They will have you chasing your tail for so long that you forget that you could stop and walk straight. Because that's what they live for. That's where they find their power in keeping you from walking your path. They want to keep you looking all around so you don't make a step. You're better than that. You're bigger than that. And they are too. But until they realize it, what more can you do? You have to let those cage birds sing and keep it moving. One step at a time, y'all. Until next time, be blessed.